today is Chris Klug. Chris, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. What do you do, Chris? Uh, I am a developer slash public speaker slash architect slash do anything that people will pay me to do, basically. You're a busy man. Yeah, I, I try. <laughs> Uh, and you're probably traveling less these days than you used to, because I, when I've met you, it's always been in some foreign country. Sometimes, always to me, sometimes to you. Yeah, no, it's been. It's it, it used to be a lot of traveling. Uh, I tried toning it down a bit the last two years, but right now it's there's no traveling at all. No traveling the whole at all. Corona is is destroying my life. I know it's uh, it's it hasn't destroyed my life, but it's changed my show for sure. I used to always do this in person, and now. The world has changed, so I'm doing it yeah. <laughs> online. That's okay. I get to see your smiling face. <laughs> Although I have to say, I'm a little disappointed that you're not wearing the makeup in I, yeah, your I, profile picture, the, the kind of demonic I, makeup. <laughs> I know. I'm actually. I, I talked to my wife yesterday. I'm actually considering doing the makeup for NDC because I'm doing really? one of their conferences online. I was like, it would be kind of fun to do the makeup just because and have that as I as I do my presentation. Okay, I'll, put a, I'll try to put a picture in here <laughs> to let the audience know what we're talking about. Yep. Uh, and what, what do we want to talk about today? Um, yeah, so you, you asked me what I want to talk about, and I, I, I'm working on a big project right now. It's, it's a fairly complex project. I've been on it for six months-ish now, and I still don't understand the domain. It is just really, Ouch. really complicated. Uh, and it's been an interesting situation with trying to figure out what to build and how to build it and when to build it, as in with every single project. And I just thought about the idea of people should start thinking before they hack and, and start building stuff. Um, I, I, I used to be the kind of person that focused a lot on the tech part and that I want to get this to work. I want to try this new cool technology. I want to do all of these cool technical things. And yeah, the more, more I, yeah, now the more I, the older I get, the more I think, actually, I want to do a really cool pattern here. I want to do some cool architecture instead. So less tech and more upfront thinking about what could change in the future, what should I put into the solution now so that when it changes in the future, I'm, I'm flexible enough to handle that change. And especially in a domain that's changing constantly, like the one that I'm in right now, having that afterthought before you build it just makes so much sense. Well, that's interesting. You said uh, the domain is changing but you're advocating for some, maybe some more design up front. It seems, that seems paradoxical to me. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's not, well, actually the domain is not changing. It's, it's probably more the, the client's way of describing the domain. Uh, oh, okay. It, it, which is complicated. And, and yes, I know it, it seems paradoxical to say, hey, I want to do more upfront thinking uh, with something I know very little about. But the thing is, if you think ahead with the things you do actually do know or you think you know if you build those things properly they are not going to get in your way in the future it's like that's what i'm thinking if i spend more time with the, the parts that i've i know fundamentally i think i've got right then all the fringe things or all the things around it that might change will not affect hopefully the things that i have understood properly um and it's just sometimes if you just we have a lot of layers and lots of abstractions, and I, I, I know the team asked in the beginning, why are there so many abstractions? Why do we have so many layers? It makes it really hard to understand. Uh -huh. Very true, but just the last week, we ended up rewriting the storage mechanism and breaking classes apart so that parts of it is stored in Azure and parts is stored in Amazon for legal reasons. Uh, and I could shove in a, little, a shim underneath, basically at the bottom tier, and get storage to split out into different things without having to change the rest of my code, just because we had those abstractions in place. Um, I'm not saying, I know that people are talking about abstractions, they always go with it, oh, you should interface out the database because if you ever want to switch from SQL to, to um, Oracle, which by the way, never happens. I've never uh, seen that happen. <laughs> I, I know, and whenever I mention that, there's always somebody in the audience that says, I have done that. What? Honestly, it's not something we do a lot, uh, but having the abstractions in there allows us to make changes and, and move things without disturbing other parts, which is to me very important. And that's where I'm saying, like, think, think ahead of time. It's very easy to figure out at least some of the things you know are gonna change. Not only change because requirements change, but even things like, how do we sort this out in the dev environment versus production environment versus 
UAT and testing and things like we're depending on um, Azure Key Vault to store our, all our secrets. We don't want to have that on our dev and box and, and be dependent on Azure for our development locally. So we need to be able to switch that out anyway. Sure, or uh, automated testing and unit testing. Yes. Uh, it's uh, it's nice to ha not have a dependency on a, a key vault or a database. Yeah, because it just makes it everything very very complicated. Um, and and yeah, and the, the coming to testing, I'm not I'm not a test driven developer at all. I have a I have a very hard time doing TDD because it doesn't fit into my way of thinking. Okay. But having automated tests is not the same thing as as test driving your development. So we do end up writing a lot of tests, and I I love tests not because I think they find maybe tons of bugs all the time, but I love the fact that I can execute a part of my code with a predefined set of parameters. So when I'm, even things like mapping my entity framework database model, I actually map that and I put unit tests on top of it just to make sure that I can read my entities out of the database and I can persist them. And then I can play around with all the mappings to make sure that I get all the mappings like I want without having to start the application. So I actually have write one unit test for, for, for reading and one test for writing for every entity I map in Entity Framework just so that I can play with the mappings and see if I can find it, figure it out because I kind of suck at Entity Framework so it takes <laughs> forever for me to figure out how to get relationships being mapped correctly and, and basically setting private fields and things like that. Uh, yeah, I'll share a story about uh, one of my, my least favorite abstractions. I worked on a project <laughs> where the architect had designed, he designed the, the data abstraction using an ORM, which is, which is fine, it's pretty common, but he, yeah. had, he had designed a, level, a layer on top of that, an abstraction on top of that, so that if we wanted to, we could swap out into the framework for some other OR. Oh, just in oh, case. That, that, that's an interesting one. I've never heard that one before. I had never heard it since. And the, the punchline <laughs> is before we wrote a line of code, the architect left the company. Oh, nice. <laughs> but the people, the management there loved him and they loved his architecture and they implemented it. Oh, I, okay. I, I've, I don't condone violence as a general rule, but. <laughs> I can't Some cases. feel held responsible if I ever meet this guy. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and it's interesting. There is, it's, I, I always talk about abstracting away things, and people think I might go too far. Uh, but I wouldn't abstract. Sometimes you have to take a dependency, but then I, I think as soon as abstracting things is fine. But as soon as you take a dependency, go all in on that dependency, because hmm. you, you might as well if if you're gonna have that dependency then yeah, hide the dependency behind something if you need to, but then use the dependency f to the full extent that you can use it. Uh, because there are benefits from the different de extensions that you've chosen or the dependencies you have chosen. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't potentially add something on top of Entity Framework, but it does no, add a very interesting... It, it does add an interesting question though. Uh, and that is, do you put a, a repository on top of your Entity Framework model? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I've uh, tried. I've actually blocked it out of my mind in the last yeah, uh, we, eight years. But <laughs> we, we, the th no. It's, I, I got the question on this project as well. It's like, do we, if we've got Entity Framework doing the mapping for us, do we actually need a repository to hide Entity Framework? And I was like, no. Well, we could probably get away without it because unit of work is implemented in in Entity Framework, and the repository part is partially implemented there as well. But then you end up with hey, but you still need to call all of, the, all of these include statements to get your related entities eager loaded, for example. Uh, so we might want to call those all over the place. And then, oh, it would actually, so we ended up, we put repositories on top of it uh, as, as another abstraction. So we're kind of hiding entity framework as well, but not okay. in the way that we want to be able to switch it out. More of a, it, it's just, it simplifies the use of it in some cases. I think you've hit on something here that, in so not in so many words, but uh, a general rule is that abstractions add complexity to any application. There's a cost to them. Yep. There's a there's a mental cost to them, and you have yep. to justify that cost in some way. So if you're writing Absolutely. a simple hello world application and a a spike or something that you just come in for a day to make a fix, it's probably not worth it to add a lot of abstractions to that and add that complexity to it. But if you're on a project that's going to be two years long and has uh, a lot of complexity to it, a lot of moving parts, then down the road you can see that. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's that trade off. 
Absolutely. I, I've done a lot of talk about uh, the solid principles around the world right. at different conferences. And most people have, have heard of the solid principles, and it, but it's always interesting to get into the discussion. And I, I often get the question, how solid is my code? Like, how, 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 how far down the line do I go with solid? And I'm like, you have to be pragmatic in that area as yes. well. It's like, at some point, you have to stop abstracting things and actually add an implementation. Yes, you might have chosen the wrong place, but you can always split an implementation into an abstraction, two different abstractions or whatever, later on if you want to, if you've built it somewhat correct at least. Uh, and as you say, if you're just doing something simple, don't, don't shy away from building a monolith. I, I'm going to be the first person to say that building an unabstracted monolith is actually the right way to go in some cases. Right, yeah. Uh, the... Um yeah, I think for the solid principles, uh, it's a good example of there's very little dogma in this industry. Yeah, there's there's everything is guidance. Um, the whole if you read the Agile Manifesto, it never says do this. It just says these things on this list we say are more important than these things on this yeah. list. That's all it says. Doesn't mean Unless... that these aren't important, so that you can't use them ever. It's just that we value these more. Yeah. Unless you then take. Agile, and then you turn it into Scrum, and then it turns into you should do this and you should do that. It's like we'll have a manifesto that says that it's all about people interacting, uh, interacting over pr uh, process, and then we put a process on top of it and we call it Scrum, and then we can sell it. Okay, uh, I guess maybe Agile is the interface and Scrum is the implementation. The imp yeah, that, maybe. I don't know. That, that's, that down. that's deep, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's a very deep, deep thought. Uh, there is a trade off. So, uh, you, you, you've talked a lot about design up front. And if you're being agile, there, there's a, I think there's a myth that says agile means don't do any design up front. Yeah. And I think you're, you're saying that's not true, right? I, I don't like that idea. We're doing very agile stuff. Like, like we're ridiculously agile in the project I'm working on, but it, it just means that you, to me at least, agile means that you take chunks, you take a little piece of work and this is what we're going to implement, but nobody has ever said, or I don't think anybody's saying that once you've decided what chunk you need to implement in an agile manner, you shouldn't think about how you actually do the implementation. To me, agile is a matter of, breaking your solution into smaller pieces and choosing the most important piece first or the one that you need at the moment and then you build that and then you reevaluate the situation and you select the next piece. So I, I, I believe that you do need a, a certain amount of design uh, and not just start hacking away. And I think I, I'm a big fan of Agile. I just think that in a lot of cases, like you say, Agile becomes this weird thing where people are saying, you shouldn't do a lot of design work. We don't need to sign documents. Oh, well, by the way, we don't need to document anything because we've got the code, right? So we don't need that. It's all open source anyway, so we don't need to document it. And I don't think that was the intention. I think the intention with Agile was to build really good enterprise applications. And that requires us to have documentation and design work and stuff like that. It was just, I think, more of a we don't know exactly, we're going from point A to point B, but we don't know what point B is exactly right now. So we'll do little steps at a time. Each step to me, like for example, each sprint involves selecting what are we doing and then designing how we implement that part of the product in that sprint. And then in the next sprint, we go back and we have a look at what did we do? What can we do now? So I think we do need a bit of design work and it's gonna save us down the line because very common thing that I see is people, they, they pick up their, their sprint and they just start hacking away and they're not thinking about what's happening in the next sprint. Because even though we don't necessarily know what's going to be exactly in the next sprint, we can have some form of idea of what is probably going to happen. Right. And that's where experience comes into play as well. If you've done it for 20 years like I have, you have seen a few projects along the way. You, you know where, where the problems are going to arise and you do know what you pretty much know what the client is going to say for the next sprint like i know that my client is going to tell us to build x y and z in the next sprint so i can actually have that in the back of my mind already when i'm building my things yeah i, I agree I, I, you always have to keep an eye on uh the larger picture that's, a, yeah. that's the hardest that's one of the difficult things about software development you're building this small thing but you know that it's a piece of this larger thing and being able to focus in and then focus out yeah uh, at, almost simultaneously is, is a and, great skill to have. 
And that's what's interesting because I look back at when I started developing and I would was really new with software development uh, and I was always impressed by senior developers pulling out this this they would build all of these small pieces and then slowly they would just put them together like Legos and they would fit together and it would become bigger and bigger and bigger pieces and it just all seemed to fit together whereas whenever I did it I would build this little piece and I would build this other little piece but when I tried to fit them together, they wouldn't really fit together. So you'd have to duct tape them or put some chewing gum in the middle to get them to talk together. And then, then you do that over and over again. And th it just turned out to be a really crappy solution. And I think that's where experience comes into play, that you have that thought of, OK, I'm building piece A today, but that is probably going to fit into piece B tomorrow and then probably piece C at the end of it. So let's have a think about how we can plug them in even before we have built them so that we know sort of where we're going. I'm, I'm happy to hear that you made some of the same mistakes that I did. <laughs> I think we all career. have. <laughs> I can't count the number of times that I built a component and handed it off to somebody else that was going to consume it. And they said, uh, well, where's the piece that does this? Oh, I didn't write that. <laughs> where's yeah. the piece that does that? Oh, I'll go write that now. And then I'd end up, you know, they wouldn't use 80% of the code that I actually did write. <laughs> Yeah, I, know, I, I think we've all been there. We've all done that. And it's very easy to sit here 20 years later and complain about what I did uh, when I started out or complain about other people that I see and I work together with or work for or whatever that haven't done it for, for as long as I have, that they are not doing it, in quotes, the right way. But the right way is, first of all, there's no right way, but there's like a... probably there are a lot a, of right ways. Uh, there are a lot of right ways, but there are better or worse ways. And... Okay. and I think your your experience comes into sort of hopefully choosing a better path than, than somebody that has no experience previously. That's fair. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it's true of me. I, um, well, great. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Is there anything we haven't talked about you think we should? No, I think we're pretty good. I, I got yeah. to rant about uh, my opinions about software. And I, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> I got to that. listen to your rant. <laughs> uh, and you're, are you, I know you're not traveling now, but you're doing. sounds like you're doing some online speaking. What's coming yes, up? Yes, uh, there's a. I'm doing NDC Porto and NDC Oslo. Those are my okay. next conferences. And I, I love the fact that they are doing all of the NDC conferences that used to be around the world is now virtual, and they keep them named after the places where they were supposed to be. So it's nice. still NDC Porto, but it's online, uh, which is interesting. Um, so those are my next two ones. Uh, so right now, it seems like everybody is going either virtual or just pushing conferences to the end of the year, hoping that it will, after the summer, everything will clear up. I have my doubts. Oh, I hope you're wrong. I hope. I, I hope, I, I hope, delivery. yeah, I hope and believe are two different things. Yeah. <laughs> I hope it's going to be over really, really soon, but I believe it's probably going to be, I don't think we're going to do conferences at all this year. Mm, that's possible. Again, I, I hope you're wrong, but you may be right. We'll see. Oh, event, we can, I, we can really come back to this. I got a chance to talk to you. Uh, you're in Stockholm. I'm in Chicago. And here we are. That's, this is, it's all good. Absolutely. It was Thank awesome to, to join you. A lot of people say that technology is not a very a place where you find a lot of people and it's not very social, but honestly, most of my friends actually come out of the tech scene and it's full of awesome people.